guys and welcome back to my channel welcome if you're new make sure you hit that subscribe button and let's get right into this video so today we have sister spice once again hello everyone and i know you're probably like what on earth is that don't be alarmed yeah this is this is bad we need to fix this right now so let's get started <laughs> we're first gonna start off by pushing back the cuticles it's not that bad it just needs a little, little bit of shaping. shaping next we're gonna be using this round cuticle drill bit and i'm gonna work this around the cuticle area Next, I'm going to take my cuticle scissors and I'm going to trim off the excess dead skin. Next, I'm going to trim down the excess nail growth. Then I'm just going to smooth out the nails. Next, I'm going to take my sanding band and I'm going to remove all of this excess like residue on the nails. Okay, now I just got my not polished nail tips and we're gonna size these out. Now we're gonna glue them on with some KDS glue. All right, next we're going to be reshaping the nail tips. Okay, next I'm going to be using this fine grit sanding band and I'm just going to remove the shine from the nail tips. Next I'm going to add on some dehydrator. Next, I'm going to add some primer. And then I'm going to add on a layer of base coat. Okay, so all of the nail prep and everything is done. We got the base coat on there and now I'm just going to start with this poly gel application. So here is our inspiration for this nail set. It's a really cute like neutral brown nail set. We're doing a pattern basically. It's gonna go French tip, fully nude nail, French tip, and then so on. So this first nail is gonna be a full nude nail. Hey everyone, it's Sister Spice with the Reddit stories. Spicy Reddit. So this first story that I got is from the subreddit, no sleep. Okay, so this first story is titled, my sugar daddy asked me for questionable favors. His Tinder profile said he was 45, but he looked to be in his early 30s at most. His bio said, looking for a sugar baby, $700 weekly. Nothing intimate. It sounded too good to be true, but as a broke university student, I was willing to take my chances. So I swiped on him and it was a match. His message came seconds later. Hey there, sweetheart, smiley face. I cringed at that word. I hated it, but $700 was $700. So I sucked it up and replied, hey, winky face. His name was Jack and he told me he owned his business. Although he never specified what kind of business it was, we talked for a while, but he asked for my Venmo to send me my first payment. After a few minutes, I got the notification. I stared at the $700 for at least 20 minutes, expecting to wake up from a dream any second now, but it wasn't a dream. You still there? I clicked the message. Yeah, I'm um, sorry. If you don't mind me asking, what are you looking for in return? I stared at the chat until he replied. 
I'm just looking for you to do a few favors for me, smiley face. That sounded like it was going to be questionable to me. Like what? For example, the first thing I need you to do is pick up a delivery for me. That sounded innocent enough, but I was still expecting there to be some kind of twist. $700 to pick up a package? Come on. Even I wasn't that naive. Is it from the post office or something? I replied. No, I'll send you the address, but I'd rather not do this through this app. You got kick or can I, can you give me your phone number? Kick? Was this 2011? I decided to give him my phone number instead and he texted me the address immediately. Followed by the next te text was the address to his house where I would have dropped off the package. I'm not home right now, but there's a key on the bottom of the blue flower pot near the door. Go inside and put the package on the coffee table in the living room. Make sure that you lock the door when you go inside the house and then lock it again when you leave. I grabbed my car keys and wallet and got into the car, putting this address into Google Maps. Got it, on my way, I sent. My phone buzzed as I backed out of my driveway. I'm serious, lock the door both times, please. I thought that was a little excessive, but I promised him that I would. The house looked abandoned. It had a broken chain link fence around it with a small door that was hanging on for dear life. It stuck out like a sore thumb surrounded by the houses that were a lot nicer than this one in comparison. You hear for Jack's stuff, I looked up at a man standing in the open doorway of the house. He took up almost the entire space, his head skimming the top of the door frame. He was huge in height and muscle, and his entire torso was covered in tattoos. Um, yeah, I guess, I replied, not moving from my spot on the sidewalk. Stay right here, he said. I did. I actually don't think I would have moved if he asked me to. I looked around and realized that there was no one else on this street. I was a 21 year old woman alone in the street. I gripped my car keys. A few minutes later, the man came back out carrying a cardboard box. It was about the size of a shoebox, but stained and damped on some of the corners. Can you open your car? He asked. I opened the trunk, not wanting that inside my car seat, and he set it inside. All right, there you go, he said. Thanks, I replied. I walked around to the driver's side of the car and opened the door. Oh, and one more thing, he said. I looked at him. Watch out, he said. I didn't reply. I blasted my music as I drove to Jack's house, hoping it would drown out my anxiety. It didn't. I parked my car in the stone driveway and stayed inside the car, admiring the house. It was a huge house with stone pillars on the front porch and the greenest grass I have ever seen in my life. I turned the car off and got out. I grabbed the package and walked to the front door, getting the key from where he said it would be. I opened the door, stepped in, closing it behind me. I thought about what he said about locking the door when I got inside. I thought that was a little overboard, but as I stared at the closed door, something made me reach out and lock it. Girl, he said lock the door twice. Why wouldn't you? It's literally not that hard. I walked inside, my feet cushioned by the thick maroon carpet and admired the inside of the house. All the furniture was wooden and looked incredibly expensive. Wooden furniture. I would probably finish school a dozen times with the money that it took to furnish this place. I set the package down on the coffee table and as I walked back to the door, I heard a phone ring from somewhere inside the house. I froze. In my pocket, my phone buzzed. I took it out to look. Don't answer any calls that aren't from Marvin. I put my phone back and followed the sound of the phone, poking my head into a few different rooms before I found it in an office. I walked over to the desk and looked at the caller ID. Incoming call from Jack. That was odd. I grabbed my phone to look at the message again. I was starting to get a little bit creeped out and decided I wouldn't answer just to be safe and left the house remembering to lock the door as I left. I've done a few more favors for Jack since then. I drove a BMW to a random park in another city only to get out and drive a different car back to Jack's house. He had me meet one of his employees at lunch who then gave me a briefcase to deliver to the first house I had gone to and told me he would know if I looked inside. On several occasions, he's asked me to drive down to the same house and stay with the guy whose name was Julio for a certain amount of time. In total, I've made around $3,500. Most recently, Jack asked me to stay in his house overnight. I woke up to a text message from him. I need you to spend the night at my house.
Okay, so we got the first nail done. Now we're gonna cure this. I haven't ever seen him in person, but I had talked to him on the phone a few times. He proceeded to tell me he would pay me a thousand dollars to spend the night at his house, provided that I follow a few rules. I drove to his house that evening. The driveway was empty and it normally was, but the porch light was on. I walked up, unlocked the door, went inside and then locked it again. Everything in the house looked the same. Jack had told me over the phone that he would leave the list of rules on the dining room table. I set all my stuff down in the living room. My bags looked like garbage compared to the fancy furniture in there. I wandered into the kitchen and then to the dining room. Sure enough, there was a piece of paper on the wooden table held down by an empty glass. Lock the door when you come in. Only answer calls from Marvin. Don't turn on any faucets between 9 p.m. and 11 p.m. Don't open the door for anyone, no matter who they say they are, after 10 p.m. If the door to the closet at the end of the hall is open, sleep in the library. Closed, sleep in any of the bedrooms. What? Okay, so you look down to the hallway and then you see the closet door is opened you have to sleep in the library like what is this like what does this mean but if you look down the hallway and you see the door is closed you can sleep in any of the bedrooms like the gardener comes what the gardener comes at midnight <laughs> if <laughs> how did you see that you're gardening at midnight the gardener comes at midnight if he starts knocking on the windows hide that is why does she have to stay there for the night like for what for what reason knocking on the window that's freaky Turn the TV on and let it play on static throughout the night. Do not forget to do this. It has to be on static the whole night. Do, is my does my I volume gotta be think up ten, I'd be able ten to levels? Sleep. I would be creeped out. Like I couldn't do it with the static. Uh -huh. That freaks me out. Help yourself to anything in the fridge. Smiley face. Oh, perfect. <laughs> I'll pay you in the morning. Good night. I'm taking everything in that fridge and I'm hiding in a bedroom. This is creepy. I wouldn't want to walk around in that house at all. What does that even mean? Wait, turn the TV on and like, when do I turn the TV on? Throughout the night? Like at the start of the night? All night long? After 10 p.m.? Like when? Maybe when you're about to go to when sleep? When I'm about to go sleep? I made sure to follow all the rules. To be honest, I was regretting my decision. But seeing as I was already here and I was getting paid i decided to stay anyway i figured out as long as i followed all the rules i would be perfectly fine i think i would follow through too i'm not a giver up -er. <laughs> it's just a lot i would keep that paper close by like oh. what do i have to do next yeah i would carry that paper mm -hmm. around still it felt a little odd what was this a haunted house Nevertheless, I lounged around the house for a few hours as I was planning on going to sleep around 9, since that's the time that all this weird stuff would begin. At 8.50, I brushed my teeth, using the faucet for the last time before 9. I checked the closet in the hallway, and upon seeing that it was opened, I moved my stuff into the library and got ready to sleep on the couch. I locked the doors just in case and laid on the couch, scrolling through my phone. I hadn't gotten any message from Jack and I started to think up scenarios and reasons as to why he had such strict, peculiar sets of rules in his house. So she checked the closet door at the end of the hallway and it was opened. Uh -huh. So she got to go in the library. Uh -huh. I would grab any snack from that fridge yeah. and bring it in the library. I don't think me. I'd be able to sleep. And then what if, okay, let, right? What if the library, it has to be on the first floor, right? And mm -hmm. then you hear the gardener, the gardener start tapping on the I'd windows. I'd be freaked I would, out. I would make sure all the windows are locked. No one can possibly mm -hmm. enter through the windows because I, like, I just locked myself in the library and now the gardener is in the library. <laughs> I had dozed off at some point because at exactly 10, 16 p.m. I was woken up by the doorbell ringing. I was about to get up to check it, but then I remember the rules. Don't open the door for anyone, no matter who they say they are after 10 p.m. 10, 16 p.m. You can't do it. Mm -hmm. Can't do it. You're 16 minutes too late. I stayed on the couch trying not to move, paranoid that they would hear even the slightest sound. It's the police. Open up. I'm not opening it. I can't. My rules say I can't open it. You can it. open it. I'm not opening it. You can open the door and prove me. Prove me you're the police. And then I'll be like, I have these rules to follow. I don't, I'm, I'm a hostage. I don't know. It's the police. Open up. I didn't move. Hello, it's the police. Open up or we're coming in. I still didn't move. I could hear my heart beat in my ears. There was silence for a while after that. Then the doorbell rang again. Hey, it's Jack. Let me in. I hope she turned on the TV static. Me too. <gasps> she didn't mention that she did that yet. Maybe she forgot. Okay, so the next nails are going to be French tip. It sounded like Jack, but still, I didn't get up. He would have a key, wouldn't he? 
Why would he need to me to let him in? I'm glad this girl is smart. Mm -hmm. This girl is smart. This continued for almost a full hour. Different people would ring the doorbell announcing themselves and then disappear when I didn't respond. I was finally able to fall asleep and the gardener never came. When I woke up the next morning, I heard someone in the kitchen. I got up slowly and unlocked the door as quietly as possible, taking my phone with me and walked across the living room and into the kitchen. I stopped at the entrance and peered in. It was Jack. He was standing in front of the stove, steering something as the coffee machine brewed coffee on the counter behind him. Hey, good morning, he said when he saw me. Hi, I replied nervous. I hadn't seen him in person before, but he looked exactly like his pictures online. Scrambled eggs, he asked, motioning to the pan with a wooden spoon. Everything's wooden. Yeah, thanks, I replied, walking over to take the plate from him. I ate my breakfast and drank some coffee in silence. So, how was it? He asked. It was okay. Nothing super freaky happened, I replied. Cool, he replied. There was an awkwardness in the room. I think I'm gonna go now. I have class. I trailed off. I didn't, but I really wanted to get out of here. Oh no, yeah, sure. I'll talk to you some other time, he replied. I grabbed my stuff and he walked me to his car. I could see him standing in the driveway staring at me as I left. Where's your money, girl? And why wouldn't she ask why? I would be curious, yeah, like, like why? why is all this happening? When I got home, I packed all my stuff and noticed that I still had the list with me. I sat on my bed and read it again. I felt my body tense up as I realized that I had forgot something. I turned the TV on and let it play on static throughout the night. Do not forget to do this. She forgot. Turn the TV on and let it play on static throughout the night. Do not forget to do this. Do not forget to do this. I stared at the word on the page until they lost meaning. Beside me, my phone buzzed, snapped me back into reality. It was the thousand dollar payment. I looked at my phone and then back at the list. Maybe it wasn't an important step. As I was thinking this over, a text from Jack came. I'm not in town right now. I should be back next week. So you're free from running any more errands for me until then. Just sent the payment. Go do something fun, winky face. I stared at the message and read it again and again. And once more for good measure. I'm not in town right now. Who was that? I thought back to this morning and how Jack was in his house. How he gave me breakfast. I'm not in town right now. Within minutes, a new text came in this time from a number that I didn't recognize. Did you forget to do something? Winky face. The text was followed by a picture of Jack, or whoever this version of Jack was, standing in front of the TV. I didn't respond. Next came another picture. This one was of the outside of my house. It was followed by another text. Watch out. What? There's a part two, don't worry. <gasps> okay, so I'm reading some of the comments. Um, one comment said, You forgot two rules, actually. The TV and you didn't lock the door behind you when you left. It's why fake Jack was able to follow you. I've got goosebumps and a bit creeped out right now. <gasps> Everyone's like, yeah, you're totally right. I missed that. I missed the lock one as well. Oh my god, I didn't realize that. Man, you thought she was smart. <laughs> Hey, sometimes you forget a few things. It's, it, it was Girl, the closet door. Girl, why wouldn't she reread? I would have totally reread every single step and did a checklist. She didn't. She, that, okay, yeah, that was a little. Mm -mm. All right, now we're into part two of this story. I didn't leave my house for almost an entire week. The only reason I didn't stay indoors for longer is that I had an important exam in one of my classes that I absolutely had to be present for. That also didn't help with the anxiety I was feeling. As I drove to campus, I kept my eyes glued to my surroundings, almost running two stop signs and a red light. I kept expecting Jack, or fake Jack, I suppose, to pop out randomly on the side of the road, or in the car next to me, or in the car behind me. I constantly glanced at my rearview mirror, trying to figure out if the black truck behind me had been there this whole time, or if it was a different one than the one I've seen 10 minutes ago. I hadn't told him where I went to school, so maybe he wouldn't know. Then again, I hadn't told him where I lived either, and he seemed to figure that one out rather quickly. Oh, girl, all he had to do was follow you home. That's mm -hmm. it. I hadn't texted the real Jack since the incident had happened. I mean, I didn't even know what I was supposed to say. Oops, I didn't follow one of your rules, and now there's a weird lookalike of yours running around the city. My plan, as foolish as it was, was to act if all was well. 
I wasn't going to stir the pot by telling him that I had already messed up, so instead I was going to wait until he realized that something was wrong. Hopefully he wouldn't. I will admit that not telling him was more difficult than I thought, and I found myself constantly checking my phone for texts from Jack, but none appeared. I finished my exam that day, sure that I had failed due to my lack of focus, and drove back home where I found Julio standing in my driveway. He looked down at his phone and I attempted to keep driving down the street before he saw me, but I wasn't fast enough. He glanced and began walking towards my car as I so slowly pulled into the driveway, locking my door and trying to remain calm. Instead of shifting into park, I put my foot on the brake and shifted into reverse, fully ready in case I needed to make a quick getaway. Who's Julio? That guy that she received the package from, remember? Oh. That she went to that mm -hmm. abandoned house and then package from. She kept going back to that house to get more packages, I guess. And you know. now he's at her house. I'm sure they'll explain. I sat in the driver's seat looking forward at my front door. I wondered for a second if I would be able to get inside and locked the door before julio got to me suddenly he leaned down and knocked on my window making me jump i turned to look at him and said nothing roll your window down he said motioning for me to lower the window i pressed the button for a split second only making a tiny crack of open space you know it's not me you should be afraid of i looked at him and glanced at my rearview mirror trying to see if any of my neighbors were outside but they weren't and i was alone and no witnesses you messed it up he said leaning against my car I told you to watch out, and you didn't. You managed to mess up the rules in one night. They always miss at least one. They? I'm dying, ho, plug me in. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I looked up at him, but said nothing, because I honestly had no clue what to say. Get out of your car, we're going inside. He tapped his head on the roof of my car and walked towards my front door. I thought about driving away, but I wasn't sure where I would go, and part of me wanted to hear him out. So I found myself parking the car, turning off the engine, and letting Julio into my house. He took a seat on my couch and glanced around my living room. This is fancy for a college student. You buy this with Jack's money? He asked. I rolled my eyes as I stood in front of him. Why do you want to come in? All right, touchy subject, he said, shrugging. I need to talk to you about Jack. Which Jack? The one I've been talking to or the one who appeared in the house? What? He snapped, leaving, leaning over and resting his elbows on his knees. What? What do you mean, the one who appeared in the house? Jack isn't back yet. I came here to tell you that you forgot to lock the door after your little house-sitting gig, which Jack won't be pleased about. He's very particular about this stuff. He's gotten rid of girls for much pettier stuff than this. I said nothing and stared at Julio when he stared back waiting for me to explain myself. His use of the word gotten rid of made me nervous and I wondered what he meant by that. Surely he won't kill me over one mistake, right? Was there someone else in the house? He asked after a few seconds of silence. Jack? Jack was in the house the morning before I left. How do you suppose that happened? Because Jack hasn't come back from his trip yet. I shrugged, not really knowing what to say. Julio stood up, sighing in annoyance. Fine, you know what? I originally came over here to ask you for a share of the cash you got from your poor house-sitting job, but it seems to me that you probably messed up more than I originally thought. So I'm just gonna stay out of whatever this is. Good luck! He walked over and opened my front door, waving to me as he left, leaving me standing in my empty house. I ran to the door and locked it as soon as he was gone, starting to freak out once again. I thought about what I was going to do if Jack came back from his trip and found out that I had messed up. What if Julio was right and someone had broken into the house and robbed him? Maybe I just thought I saw Jack, but maybe it was just some other stranger who looked like him. My mind was going a mile a minute and I was trying to figure out what to do. I paced around my house for a few hours before I finally decided that I was going to drive back to Jack's house and make sure that no one had broken in. If they had, I would simply make an anonymous police report or something. Besides, the only way he would ever know that it was my fault would be if Julio snitched on me, which it didn't seem like he was planning on doing anymore. I made the drive over in silence trying to control my breathing so that I didn't have a meltdown on the highway. I finally pulled into the driveway and turned the engine off, but I couldn't work up the courage to get out of the car. I sat there a few minutes staring at the giant house trying to force myself to unbuckle my seatbelt, open the door, and get out of the car. 
The house, which one looked impressive, now made me feel anxious and out of place. I couldn't stop myself from imagining all sorts of horrible scenarios that I could stumble upon once I opened the door. I thought about how many possible hiding places there were in the in a house that large. I didn't know how long I sat there before I finally decided to get out of the car and walk towards the front door. I hesitated for a few seconds before taking a deep breath and pushing the door open. Only it didn't open because it was locked. I assumed that Julio had probably locked it and looked for the key on my keychain. I unlocked the door and stepped into the living room, taking a look around. Everything looked normal enough. There was no signs of breaking and entering or anything like that. Okay, so to finish the French tip nails, I'm going to be using this ash rose color. It's this nice light brown. And I was glad that Julio had come over and realized my mistake before someone else had. I closed the door behind me this time double checking that I locked it, and began to make my way further in the house. I went to the library first, which looked the same as it had when I had left. Next, I made my way through the living room, glancing around to see if anything was out of place, but nothing. I was starting to feel better now that I had confirmed that no one had broken in and ruined the place. That feeling was short-lived, however, when I walked into the kitchen. It was a complete mess. Both the fridge and the freezer were wide open. All the containers of food emptied out. There were empty boxes of frozen food tossed inside the freezer and on the kitchen floor. There were a few trays of meats that were laying out and on the table and the counters, and some of the red juice from the meats had been spilled inside the fridge and now dripping down onto the floor. I noticed that while there hadn't been much food in the first place, it was all gone. As I got closer to the fridge, I realized that it wasn't cool and the light inside the fridge wasn't working either. I assumed that whoever ate all the food also unplugged it for some odd reason. I stepped over an empty carton of orange juice and an empty crate of eggs as I made my way towards the stove where I found stacks of unwashed pans. One of them was still hot, meaning that it was only recently taken off the burner. There were eggshells all over the counter and I thought back to the morning when Jack, or whoever that was, had made me eggs for breakfast. I walked back out of the kitchen, careful not to step on the mess that littered the floor and made my way down the hallway. I spotted the door at the end of the hall and this time it was closed. As I continued to walk down the hall, I couldn't help but notice how eerily quiet it was in the house. I couldn't hear the sound of the heater running. As I passed the thermostat in the hallway, I saw that it wasn't working. The screen was off and there was nothing on, like it had been turned off or something. I leaned forward and pressed a few of the buttons, but none of them worked. I poked my head into the study, but that was also empty. Although I did see that the landline had been used recently and whoever used it didn't put it back. The handheld part was hanging off the side of the desk and I stepped in, grabbing the phone and holding it up to my ear. But there was only silence. I put it back and followed the cord with my eyes. It was connected to the wall, but it seemed like there was no power in the house, which explained the refrigerator and the thermostat. I walked out of the study and headed down the hall again, but I froze in my tracks when I noticed that the door at the end of the hall was opened now. Someone was in the house. I reached in my back pocket and grabbed my phone, checking to see if maybe I had mi missed a text from Jack, but I had no signal inside the house. I held my phone in my hand anyways, hoping I'd pick up enough signal to call for help and began to back away from the door, listening carefully for any footsteps or noises that would let me know where the intruder was. As I spun around, I found myself face to face with Jack or whoever it was that I was looking at. I knew he was the same man I had seen that morning, but had no idea who he really was. Sorry, I said startled. Which one are you? He asked, squinting at me. He was dressed in a stained gray t-shirt and old pajama pot bottoms that looked like they had been purchased 30 years ago. What? I asked. You're the new one, right? The one from the other day? You're the one who forgot to turn the television on. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I thought I was being careful. I didn't mean to. I stopped talking as he started laughing. Sorry? He asked, grinning. I should be thanking you. Who are you? I asked him. I stared at his face and he looked exactly like Jack, but I couldn't figure out why he was here. He said he was still on his trip. I'm Jack, he replied, as if he was stating the obvious. But Jack said he wouldn't be back for a few days. His expression changed and he narrowed his eyes at me. Did he tell you when he would be back, the exact date? 
I shook my head, confused and thinking about how I was going to get past this man and get out of this house. But you can ask him, right? I, I don't know. He hasn't contacted me in a few days. Dang it. I was hoping it wouldn't be that bad. Can you explain to me what is going on? I asked him. You shouldn't have come back here. Something fell off to me. The chills shook my entire body. Part of me regretted not going with my original plan of acting like everything was okay. I didn't want to stay in the house any longer and there was really nothing that I could do anyways. Besides, I was getting a bad feeling from this guy claiming to be Jack. I slowly stepped past him, glancing back behind me as I continued to walk into the living room and towards the front door. I found myself walking faster and faster until I was basically running and throwing myself at the front door. I couldn't help but shake the feeling that something bad was going to happen if I stayed in this house any longer. I unlocked the door, but just as I was about to open it, I heard the lock slide back into place, only it sounded a lot louder than usual. I jiggled the doorknob and realized that while the doorknob wasn't locked, something else was and it was keeping me from opening the door. I began to freak out as I pulled on the door urgently trying to get it to open but something was keeping it shut. What the heck? I said out loud. I glanced towards the hall as I heard another voice but I quickly realized that it was the sound of air flowing through the vents. It seemed like the power was back and somehow some sort of security system has activated at this time. I looked down at my phone and not only did I have signal now, but I also had three messages from Jack. I'm back. What happened? I know you're in the house. I looked around the room trying to find him or any security cameras in the room that would be alerting him of my presence in the house. I didn't see any and grabbed my phone to text him back. Are you here? I held my phone in my hands as I made my way back towards the hallway to find the other Jack that I had seen earlier. If he even was another Jack, maybe this was all the same person and he was just messing with me for some reason. A part of me thought that perhaps I deserved all of this for doing all of this in the first place. I mean, why was I so quick to agree to run to random errands for a random man that I have never met? Sure, I needed the money, but going into a stranger's house has got to be on the list of top 10 dumbest things you could ever do. Especially considering the fact that no one knew where I was, and I didn't have a weapon to defend myself if I needed to. I stood in front of the closed door for a second before making my way over to a window. I tried to open it, but the security system had locked the window shut as well. I thought about breaking the windows open and I grabbed a sturdy looking vase. I took a few steps back and then threw it at the window as hard as I could. The vase shattered as it made contact with the window glass, but the window was fine and unscratched. The only way I was getting out of here was through the door, but first I had to disarm the security system somehow. I walked back to where I had left Jack, but he was gone and nowhere to be found. Jack? I called, my voice echoing throughout the house. The door at the end of the hall was closed once again, and I began to walk towards it, peeking into each room as I passed it, but there was no one else in the house. As I reached the door, my phone buzzed in my hands. You were supposed to follow the rules. I stood in front of the door, trying to work up the courage to open it and see what was in the room. I know, I'm sorry. I came back to make sure everything was okay. I reached out and grabbed the doorknob, taking deep breaths. The buzzing in my hand startled me and I ignored it as I turned the doorknob and pulled the door open. I stood in the threshold at the top of the wooden staircase. Below was a badly lit basement. I slowly walked down the stairs, glancing at my phone. You should have stayed away. You're really going to regret this. I didn't reply and kept walking till I was at the bottom of the stairs. While I wasn't sure what I was expecting, it wasn't the normal looking basement apartment that I had stumbled into. I found Jack sitting on the couch against one of the walls. He was reading a magazine and glanced up when he heard me step off the stairs. What are you doing? He shot to his feet as he shouted at me. The door locked. I can't get out, I replied. You're so freaking stupid, he exclaimed, walking over to me. That's rude. How was I supposed to know the door would lock when the power came back on? You weren't supposed to come back, he shouted, his face turning an angry shade of red as he yelled. I wanted to make sure everything was fine, I replied. Who cares? You got a thousand dollars for house sitting. Why didn't you t why didn't you take it and leave? Why are you so angry? Why are you even here? You're clearly not Jack, I snapped annoyed. How do you know? he asked in a calmer tone. What? How do you know I'm not Jack? 
I look like the pictures you've seen, don't I? Yeah, but Jack is on vacation, I replied. How do you know, he repeated. What are you talking about? Have you ever met Jack in person? Have you ever talked to him on the phone, video call, anything other than text messages every few days? I didn't reply, staring at him. He was right. He did look exactly like the photos, and I had seen him on the profile. That's what I thought, he replied to my silence. What are you saying exactly? I asked as I heard my phone buzz once again. How do you know that the person you've been talking to is a real person? As a matter of fact, how do you know that it's not me? Maybe this was my plan all along, to lure you here. At that point, it finally hit me. He was right. I didn't know if I was talking to a real person. All of that, I was doing random favors for someone with an internet profile who wanted to pay me money to do these things for some reason. I guess I had always felt that there was something off about a sugar daddy who was willing to pay someone to do random favors. But I needed the money too badly to spend too much time questioning it. I was feeling even more scared now and my palms were cold and sweaty as I stood there waiting for him to do something. I couldn't run back upstairs, but I didn't think I was fast enough to get out of here and find something to jam the door and keep him downstairs. I took a shaky deep breath as I tried my hardest not to make it seem like I was scared. If Jack was dangerous, I didn't want to alert him of my plans to try and run. After a few seconds of silence, I glanced down at my phone to read the most recent text, but there were no new notifications. That wasn't your phone, Jack said, breaking the silence. I looked up at, up at him as I glanced at the phone sitting on the nearby table. Suddenly, he jumped towards me and I attempted to jump out of the way, but I was too slow. I saw Jack grab my arm and my phone fell out of my hand and then everything went black. When I came to, I was on the living room couch and Jack was standing above me looking down. What happened? I asked. I attempted to sit up but noticed that I was incredibly dizzy. My left arm felt sore when I tried to prop myself up. I remembered Jack grabbing me earlier and I figured he had gripped my arm too tight and must have bruised it in the process. You're finally up. Good, he said. I slowly managed to sit up, wincing as I put weight on my left arm. I looked up at Jack, who was now standing a few feet away with a bandage wrapped around his right bicep. What happened? I asked, looking at the bandage, noticing that there was blood seeping through. You really shouldn't have come back. I tried to shift my position on the couch and winced in pain as I put weight on my left arm again. I turned to look at it, trying to see if I had injured it somehow, and noticed that it was also wrapped in a bandage similar to Jack's. What happened? I repeated, looking down at my arm. I slowly reached over and started to unwrap the bandage until it came off, and I was left staring at a crudely done stitches on the inside of my bicep. What the heck is this? I snapped, looking at Jack. Sorry, Ivy, but you really shouldn't have come back. Although I'm kind of glad you did. I didn't really want to do this, but I need to get out of here. He began to back away from me, heading towards the front door. I watched as he easily opened it and wondered how he disabled the lock and if he had been the one to activate it in the first place. He stepped out of the door and turned back to look at me. Good luck. I helped you out a bit while you were out. He said, motioning towards my phone, which he had sat down on the couch next to me. I stood up and went after him. Surprisingly, he didn't try to run or back up and simply stood at it about a foot away from the door, watching me. As I attempted to step outside, a stabbing pain erupted in my left arm, traveling throughout the rest of my body until I felt like I was being stabbed everywhere at once. I fell onto the floor, crying out in pain. Once I was back in the house, the pain went away and I laid on the floor, shaking in the aftermath as I stared up at Jack. What did you do to me? I asked. I had to get out. It's been eight months. I'm sorry, you were just the first one to come back this time. I'm sure you're a good person, but I'm sorry, I can't be here. You're just going to leave me here? I shouted. Julia will come by to give you food and by the way, don't try to cut that thing out of your arm. This place is covered in cameras. If you do anything suspicious, Julio will see you and he won't hesitate to stop you. I learned that the hard way. I didn't know what to say and I stood there in shock as I watched Jack walk over to my car and get in, starting the engine and disappearing down the street. I finally shut the front door and locked it, turning back to face the empty house. 
I glanced at my phone, which was still on the couch, and remembered what Jack had said before he left. I walked over, trying not to move my arm too much, as I picked it up and turned it on. My profile was open, and it had only been changed, and now my profile bio read, Looking for a sugar baby, $700 weekly. On the table next to it, there was a list of house setting rules, similar to the ones that I had found on the day that I had been here. At the bottom of the page, there was a lime green sticky note that read, Sorry, I hope you're able to get out soon. Don't worry, maybe you won't be there for long. They almost forget one of the rules. Good luck, Jack. The end. That was the end of the story. Um, let us have our book club discussion. Um, I'm kind of like speechless. So basically, he put out like an advertisement sort of to, you know, for about money, like, oh, I'll pay $700, do this, this, and this. And then if you mess up, you switch places with that person and you're trapped in here and, and can't leave the house. Um, there's something going on, definitely. It's like, like what? But like, who's watching them? That guy was Jack, right? No, he had to be Jack. He was just playing, like pretending, like, yeah, I'm out on vacation. Mm -hmm. That guy that was, was definitely Jack. Jack. So Jack is now telling that girl to do the same thing to try and lure someone else in there, mm -hmm. so she can leave. Yeah, but someone has to stay in the house for some reason. And then Julio, what the heck? Julio's like, he's like. Like, the guy that, like, makes sure the players are in place, you know, like, mm -hmm. in Squid Games. He would be, like, the guy in the red suits. Um, that's so crazy. And she has the money now, so she can do, like, oh, $700 <laughs> oh. To, to, you know, a week or or $1,000 to house it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Now her life is ruined. Now she's gone missing. She can't do school anymore. This is crazy. And then someone commented, Oh no, the author seems like they've been trapped for a year. Hope someone can help her. Because they haven't posted. Yeah, because they haven't posted an update, like a part three or something. Someone commented, I wonder what Julio's part is in all of this. Another comment said, Okay, so I read blah blah blah. He said, I understand the list of rules was so strange because it would make it easier to forget one of them. Forcing the victim to come back out of guilt, leaving themselves vulnerable and to be caught and made the new prisoner. But they have questions. They're good questions. Who is knocking on the door saying they are different people? Where did Jack get the money to pay her? How did he make her black out in the basement? Why didn't he like, you know, black her out when they were eating breakfast mm -hmm. in that one morning? Or when she was sleeping there? Yeah. Why did he destroy the kitchen? Why was the power off then back on after she woke up? Most importantly, how did he walk her to her car if the chip or whatever it was in his arm? And then someone was like, no, no, most importantly, who the heck is Marvin? We don't know who Marvin is. Or like, why did he have to wait? Like, why couldn't he have just done it when she was first in there? Mm -hmm. Someone was like, I bet Julio visits everyone who messed up the rules part as part of the game just to plant the seed of guilt and lure them into returning the one trapped isn't allowed to take them that morning only if they return it's the puppet masters that turn the power back on and locking her in him in there with him to do what he needs to do to swap out the players jack will likely be followed and watched for the rest of his life and be silent if he tries to speak out Julio is likely forced into this role as well, and those running the game are too rich or powerful to stand up against it. These are my thoughts. I have no clue what the author was thinking. <laughs> this could be good. This could be true. Mm -hmm. This could be like a Squid Games theme. Okay, guys, I know I only got to read one story, but it was like a super long story, and there was a part one and two, and I think it was a good story for it to just be the only story. Um, But... Of course, I have to end it on a two-sentence horror story. I just have to. There has to be a two-sentence horror story on here. So it begins, My mom always told me I was bad at puzzles as a child, but today I proved her wrong. I was finally able to put her body back together. <laughs> oh, gruesome. no. <laughs> That's gruesome. All right, so all the poly gel is on now. I'm just going to wipe off this sticky layer on the nails. All right, so here's how the nails are looking. We're just gonna get reshaping them now. I have my McCart dust collector and a hand file, and let's just get reshaping.
Okay, so the nails are nicely shaped up now. So we're first gonna get some of this dark brown. It's a little bit too dark though. So I'm gonna add a little white. Okay, now let's see. Okay, so we're gonna get started on this nail art. We're first gonna put a layer of matte top coat. I'm gonna put the nail art over this top coat and then I'm gonna sprinkle on some of that clear dip powder to give the hearts like that 3D effect. So we're gonna start by making the nails matte. I'm just gonna be taking this brown color that kind of matches this tip color and we're gonna be making some hearts all over the nail. I'm gonna start with my dotting tool and just make two dots close to each other. And then I'm gonna take my nail art brush and I'm gonna connect them to make little hearts. Okay, so I got the nail art done and now I'm gonna take some of this dip powder and I'm gonna sprinkle it over these hearts to give it that 3D effect. Alright, so here's how it looks. Now I'm gonna make her cure that. Here's how the nail's looking. Pretty cute. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the next nail, but I'm gonna be using this color. hearts are done now we're gonna go and sprinkle on the dip powder okay so for the french tip nails they're gonna have croc print i'm gonna be using this mia secret blooming gel i'm just gonna paint some on the tip of the nail all right now i'm gonna use some white gel polish and i'm just going to do that little pattern in the nail So the nail art is all done and now I'm just going to finish this off with some matte top coat. Finally to finish this set off we're going to be adding on some cuticle oil. Here's how the nails turned out. Let me know what you guys think of this nail set in the comments. Spice, what do you think? These are so stunning. I love them so very much. And welcome back to my nail tour. So on this first nail, we got here a little collage of hearts with that dip powder over them. Dark brown color. 
Next we got the French Tip Croc print. Next we got the little cute cookie tan color. And then we got another Croc print. And lastly, another Croc print. They're very like textured and like, I don't know, like fun to look at. And honestly, it was very fun. And the hardest part I think was these nails because they just trying to map out where they could fit together. It was a little bit difficult, but you know what? I think it looked good in the end. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. That's pretty much it for this nail set. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Yeah, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye!